Hi, Getty from GettyStore.com here with spaghetti squash and four ways to cook spaghetti squash. We're going to try it in the microwave, in the oven, roasted in halves, and in the oven, roasted as slices, as well as in the instant pot. So we need to figure out how to cut our spaghetti squash. You actually don't need to cut into your spaghetti squash. In the oven, in the microwave, or in the instant pot, you can cook whole spaghetti squash. What you would want to do is pierce it all over and then put it in the microwave, your Instant Pot or the oven. Now, the only hesitation I have about recommending that technique is number one is your spaghetti squash may get more watery inside and that's a common complaint I hear. So if that's an issue for you, I probably wouldn't suggest roasting it whole because Cooking it that way just traps all the moisture inside and, and really steams it and allows that moisture to stay inside. So slicing it open uh, will allow that more of that moisture to evaporate. The second reason I don't like cooking them whole is one way or another, you're gonna have to remove those seeds. I prefer removing the seeds before it's cooked because afterwards it's just that much more slippery and unless you allow it to cool, it can be very hot when you're removing those seeds. So I like to cut my squash. So here's a quick technique. Rather than cutting it raw, uh, pop it in the microwave for about four minutes to soften the outside. And remember, anytime you put squash in the microwave, you want to poke it first. So you notice that I've poked it, and put it in the microwave for about four minutes. And now I'm going to score my line and I want to avoid cutting through the stem. I want to cut just on the side of it so that's where I've scored. And now I wiggle and wobble my knife and notice that because I've softened it in the microwave, it goes quite smooth and I don't need to use brute force. And then I turn it around and I come on the other side of that stem end. And then I can uh, cut it open like so. I'm going to scrape out the inside and there you go. Now, I like cutting it lengthwise because then I um, have more cooking surface to get a little bit more caramelization happening and I just find it easier to work with that, like that. Now I can place these upside down. I can use them like this in the, in the microwave or in the oven or even in my instant pot. Okay, I have cut all of my squash and it's time to put them into the microwave oven and instant pot. So here's what I'm going to do. For the microwave, I'm using a glass or ceramic dish, putting it upside down, so cut side down and adding just enough water to coat the bottom of the dish. So that's maybe a third of a cup water. And I'm going to put it in the microwave on high power for about eight to 14 minutes. By the time it's done, I should be able to poke my fork in there and it should be fork tender. So that's what I'm looking for. So in the microwave, it goes. For the squash that I'm going to put in the oven, I want to drizzle with a little bit of uh, canola oil and a nice neutral oil that's going to help with the cooking and the caramelizing and just put that all over and then a little bit of salt and pepper so i'm going to turn these upside down because again we want the liquids to drain out in the oven they go 375 anywhere from 40 to 50 minutes depending on the size of the squash so over here in the Instant Pot, I have decided to cut my squash in half and remove the seeds before cooking. And I'm placing it in the Instant Pot, cut side down so that it doesn't hold any liquid inside. And you can use your steamer basket or I've just used a little trivet, silicone trivet, to lift it up from the water. And I've got an eight quart an instant pot, so I'm adding a cup and a half of water. You may only need to add one, uh, one cup. And I wanna hit manual. Eight minutes is what I want for a half or a cut squash. 15 minutes is what you would use if you did a whole squash that has holes poked into it. And then I want to add my lid. Make sure that it's on ceiling and we are on and ready to go. So this takes about 10 minutes to get up to pressure and then the eight minutes of cooking time. I'm looking at about 18 minutes for this 
and then I'm going to quick release this, uh, this the vent. So our microwave spaghetti squash is ready and finished. I can um, poke my fork into it and that's a good sign. It's been about nine minutes uh, for, for this size. Most of my water has evaporated. There's a little bit left in the bottom. And now everything is super hot. So, whoa, did you see that steam? So you do have to be careful. And um, our strands are ready to, to go. So we're gonna set that aside and let some of the steam um, settle down. So the instant pot just beeped, meaning it is, uh, it's cook time is done and now it's just doing the natural slow release. But if I move the um, and, and self or quick, quick vent, I can let that uh, pop back up and we can do the quick release and then get into our instant pot squash. Let's remove this lid and remember there probably will still be a little steam in there so do be careful. We are going to let this sit a little bit before we start taking out those strands because everything's very hot and I don't want to get burnt. And finally, we have our oven roasted uh, squash ready to go. And again, it's a fork tender all around. So, whoo, there it is, nice and hot. And check out these rings. They look very nice and toasty as well. So you can already start to see a little bit of difference, some of the caramelization that happens here versus our um, Instapot squash which is a little bit more steamed as well as our microwaved squash which again is a little bit more steamed. Now it's time to do the stringing, the most fun part of the of the whole operation and basically you've got to remember that the str strands run around the belly of the of the squash so it goes like this. So if you start scraping uh, lengthwise you're going to interrupt the strands. It's not a big deal but if you like the stringy bit um, you want to go with the stringy bits and you can go right to the very bottom of the um, rind and really scrape away and lift that out. So here we have the, the microwaved version. Here we have the instant pot one and remember that we cut it uh, around the belly so that we can get the long strands by just working our way around the the squash and that should give us longer strands uh, to deal with. Now that was our instant pot strands. These uh, are our rings. So again, we can try and work around the string or pardon me, around the circle and just go around and get some really nice uh, longer uh, longer strands and we put them down there and here we we do see that they're a little bit more drier they do have some caramelization and remember we seasoned these uh, already so there's a slight difference there I think these would be really fun as a nest you could you know, even crack an egg in there or put some sort of filling in there and serve each person one or two of these rings I think that would be kind of fun um, the other thing that you could do is you can just peel the rind off. So that's another easier, easier way to deal with these, uh, with these rounds. And then again, serve this on someone's plate and let them do the stringing. So that's kind of, kind of fun. I actually like these, uh, these rounds better than I thought I might. And here we have our baked boats. And again, we want to string them with the grain. There we have some of those. So there we have our different squash. Do you have a winner? Do you have a favorite uh, technique? I think they're all good and ha each have their own application. I like the speed of the Instant Pot and the microwave. I like the caramelization and um, I really like these, these rings as well. I see some real cool opportunities there. So whatever it is, enjoy your spaghetti squash and stay tuned for a couple of different recipes that are coming on the video and also check out gettystuart.com for a couple of different recipes using the spaghetti squash.